Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. I just needed it. I need, uh, I, need, I need to do the show when I want to do this show. That's really what it's all about, okay? Anyway, uh, look, uh, we got a guest, and uh, it's a good guest, and uh, we talked to him earlier today, and we'd like you to hear from him now, ladies and gentlemen. Looky here. Who's here? Uh, there's been problems out there in the world, and it's called political correctness. <laughs> And the man who, who ha is the expert on political correctness is this man right here. His name is Robert Bobby Slayton. Hello, Bobby. Hello, Alex. How are you? You know, I woke up this morning, went to the park with my girlfriend. I, have, I didn't even do my hair or my makeup, but compared to you, I guess I look pretty good. Well, yeah, um, I, I, yeah. I, I had to put the hat on quickly. Notice it says 1939. That was the year I was born. God, wow. God, isn't that horrible? Anyway, um, how, how you doing, Bobby? I'm doing good. You know, when you called me this morning, you wanted to talk about all this crap going on with comedy. And I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of talking about it because, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't been working a lot uh, by my own volition. I, I don't really want to do stand-up too much anymore. But, you know, the comedy clubs aren't really hiring me much anymore. Uh, some of them aren't paying enough. And I just haven't made it to that big... You know, uh, Carnegie Hall, Radio City level of comedy. So, you know, the, the comedy today, I, you know, you can ask me about the political correctness, what's going on today. And it's, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. It's, I, I think there's still a lot of people out there. I played a great club in Denver last week, the Comedy Works. I'm going back to the Punchline in San Francisco in a few weeks. And, you know, you got people out there. I don't know if it's the millennials. I don't know if it's, I don't want to blame any specific group of people, the Me Too movement, but people are more on edge than ever. But I think at the same time, there's also a tremendous group of people who still want to see comedy. And they understand it's one of the last bastions of free speech in this country where you can get away with whatever you want and say stuff. Obviously, you can't do it on podcasts anymore because that Shane guy just got kicked off SNL. Mm -hmm. You can't do it on terrestrial radio. You can't do it on satellite radio. Everybody, there's always watchdog groups. And there's always, there's always people who are these arbiters of what is correct, what's not correct, what you can well, say. Some, you some, somebody put it best when they said that uh, if you consider laughter the uh, you know the greatest uh, form of, uh, of, of, of uh, medicine, medicine, healing? medicine uh, yeah. that really they're not allowing you to write the prescription anymore. Well, you know, but I, I think, like I was going to say, uh, I'm not performing as much as I used to, but when I play some of these great clubs and, 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 and a few theaters, I find that when people come out to see you specifically, they know what they're in for. Mm -hmm. And I also find some people, they find it refreshing because everybody's so stifled, not just, not really on comedy stages or radio or television compared to in the workplace. I think people are afraid, and I've said this many years ago, people are afraid to tell dirty jokes by the water cooler. I mean, I remember... This, this isn't a new thing. It's just more open now and more in the news now and because of social media and everybody's got a cell phone and a camera. But I remember when it was about 10 years ago that some guy was talking about at the water cooler at work on uh, the episode of Seinfeld the night before. Remember the Volva episode? Yeah, right. Uh, and, and, and basically, I mean, that's network television. I don't know how graphic it got, but there was some woman who was offended at the water cooler about talking about a, a TV show from the, you know, the previous evening. So this has been going on for a while. It's just getting a little bit more intense, you know. And I think, I think it kind of started again because of all the social media and everybody. You know, it's happened to restaurants with Yelp. It's happened to you know, one or two people can bring down a whole business. It seems these days. Um, well, here here's the problem, Bobby. Is that that in these cases 
Number one, we're going back maybe 10 years, like this guy, is Shane, whatever his name was, that got booted from right. SNL. I think that right. that event took place about, what, 10 years ago or something? Really, I, I didn't realize how long ago it was. Was yeah. it really that long ago? Well, that's what I was led to believe. It may not have been, but I, I heard 10 years. But we do know that uh, there are a lot of other situations that did go on 10 years ago where people are not working now or being held to account for something they said 10 years ago. And I find that horrible because it reminds me of the McCarthy era when they used to say, oh, back in 1935, were you a member of the Communist right, Party? Right, exactly. It happened to Biden. It happens to a lot of politicians. You know, they changed their... Their, their tone, they change their opinion on something. Uh, well, I did that five, ten years ago. I did it twenty years ago. You know, I've, I've changed, and people yeah, not just in comedy. He, here, here, acting, here, you know? Here's my main question to you, because I know your act not by heart any longer, but I used to know it by heart. Uh, a lot of new material. Though. Uh, yeah, you got a lot of new material. Uh, we know that, but that's not the point. The point that I'm that I'm making here is: Do you find now that when you do work and you are on stage? You started to censor yourself as to what material you use? Absolutely not. And because I never felt what I did to be really racist or sexist. I mean, yes, there were racial and sexist overtones and some of the jokes. You know, I do like to walk the line, push the boundaries like that guy Shane said, or you do want to shake people up a little bit. But the basic idea of my jokes was, I think that's really funny. That's going to offend somebody. I don't care, but I find it funny. When I was looking at some of those jokes that that guy Shane did about, about the Asians, they weren't particularly funny. They were really nasty. But nasty and funny can go hand in hand. You know, it goes back. But to you Santa. used to do you used to do really tons of Chinese stuff. I mean, part of your act was about the Chinese. Well, you know, that's because when I moved to San Francisco, oh, well over forty years ago, you know, I was one of the first guys to do Asian driver jokes. And, you know, I'd go on the road and i tried to joke in Columbus, Ohio, but there really weren't that many Asian drivers. Now, I had, about a couple of months ago, I was playing in Atlanta, Georgia. I was in some little town outside of Atlanta. I had some of the best Thai food I ever had because everybody's everywhere now, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, uh, immigrants have moved everywhere. Everybody's got Netflix. Everybody's got cable. That's why American comedians do so well overseas because everybody sees everything everywhere. But back then, I would do the Asian driver jokes because I was living downtown San Francisco and I said these were... People really terrible drivers. But on top of all that, uh, there, was, there was another thing going on back then. I remember there was a club doing a black comedy night in Oakland, and which was fine. And then because the whole gay movement was starting basically in San Francisco in the 70s, early 80s, there was a gay comedy night. And gay people would make fun of straight people and black people would make fun of white people. And I said, well, if they can make fun of me, I can make fun of them. I didn't understand they were pushing back. I didn't understand all the white privilege crap. There's a whole other conversation. But people found it very offensive, and it was a double standard. Wait, you can make a joke about whitey, but I can't make a joke about I whitey. used to use, say this about uh, Chris Rock. Chris Rock's right. act was 90%, hey, so white people are this, and white people are that. Right. Now, if I did that about black people on stage, I'd never work again. But Chris Rock also started making fun of black people a lot, too. And, you, know, you know, niggas like to do this. Niggas like to... By the way, I'm not going to say the N-word. But Chris Rock... <laughs> you just did. The no, yeah. You, really, you know the N-word, the C-word? Really, yeah. we can do all the consonants and play Jeopardy here? Okay. Yeah. So C-word's cunt, black one's nigger, R is retard, uh, D is dyke. You know, so, so <laughs> almost every consonant's been taken. Already. I'd stick with the vowels, A-E-I-O-U, sometimes Y, depending on the situation. But I think it was, was, wasn't it Chappelle in his latest uh, Chappelle in his latest uh, 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 Netflix was, special you know, said that uh, the gays have used up every uh, piece of the alphabet. We can't use any of it anymore. You know, right, right. I, I was doing that joke a long time ago. Now, Dave, but not that's any ticket. But it's it's true. Everybody yeah. has a different. Uh, I got in trouble. It's not in trouble. But in San Francisco, a few. I think it was last year. I, I did a joke and it wasn't. I, I, I never knew the word dyke was offensive. No, it isn't. But wait a minute. I've asked lesbians, and they say the word dyke is not a negative term. Uh, I've talked to them, too. But in the old days, when I was in San Francisco, and I would mention, uh, talk about gay people and dykes, I never had any any problem. But in San Francisco last year, I said, uh, you know, I'd point out people, oh, what are you guys from out of town? I have an older couple here, some honeymooners, newlyweds. Hey, we got a bachelor party, a couple of dykes at this table. And the woman went ballistic. 
because to her, I guess the D word, and she want to yelp or something. The D word is like the N word or the C word, so that's another word. You know something? Yeah. That's strange because, I, and I'm going to say it again. I was told, this was back when I was in San Francisco, by some lesbians. I said, right. I don't use the word dyke because I think it's a pejorative term. And they said, right. no, it's not. It's an I okay thought, term. Well, I guess it depends on... Um, it, the person who's sitting at the table in the front row. That's what it depends I thought, on. I found unless you're an English guy drinking a beer in a pub, the word cunt is not usually a good word. Um, you know, a bloody cunt is okay if you're sitting with another guy. And, uh, well, no, but I, I asked, uh, what was his name, the guy who did uh, Live Aid? Uh, 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 Bob Geldof? Bob Geldof. I had him on the show. And, in fact, I even have a, a, a uh, he did a little uh, voice voicer for me so I could use it in a promo on the air at Sirius. And I said, the word cunt, I said, I hear it applied in England more to other guys right. than I ever hear it being applied right. to women. And he right. said, yeah, we, we, the word cunt in England is just a, you're a cunt, you know? Right. And so he made a promo that said, Hal, Alex Bennis, Bob Geldof, and I just want to say you're a real cunt. Well, you that's know? why that's why I never wanted to, you know, I moved to England because if I moved there with my wife and I was mad at her, what do I call her? I don't know what to say, you know? Yeah. What do you call her when you're mad at him in England? Yeah. There's got to be a word that uh, you should have asked him that. I'll have to call some of my English friends and ask him. Yeah. But, but anyway. Um, so, yeah, I found that basically, getting back to what you were saying, that, you know, I find that when you play a comedy club, I think a lot of people that come to see you and they know they're in a club, and some, sometimes they even put a warning out, Bobby Slayton is offensive, and which I find to be kind of silly. You find that offensive. But, <laughs> no, they, they put it out there so when people go, you, you know, it is actually interesting. Uh, and it happened in Denver last year. I was playing the club, and, you know, you get a few politically correct people, sensitive people, college people, millennial people, whatever they are. Uh, but the show was going really well. And I always say to the doorman, if anybody walks out there at my show, ask them why. I like to know what I did to piss them off. And generally, there's a half a dozen walkouts. And sometimes it's because they got to get home to a babysitter or they're not feeling well or, or they didn't know the show was running so late or whatever. You know, the old days, we couldn't take the smoke in the club. But I always wonder why somebody's leaving because uh, people do get offended. But I was playing Denver last year. and The show went fine. And they told me in the middle of the show that two women walked out crying and I wasn't even talking to them. I made women cry, you know, when they're in the front row, if we're having a little problem, not on purpose, but if they're heckling me, I made them cry. But people in the back of the room that I'm not even talking to directly, I made them cry. And I'm thinking, wow, that's how good I'm getting. <laughs> wow. I can make people cry without even having a conversation with me. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad I still have that magic touch. But you know what? I never went out of my way to upset people. And then, um, and by the way, by the way, you do, you don't want to make them cry because if you make them cry, you lose the audience. Right. But they were in the back. No, I, but you look. I've stepped over the line many times. But again, if you walk the line, or whatever you want to call it, working without a net, or you're talking off the top of your head, yeah, or you're in a bad mood, or somebody's heckling you. I said many things that I go, I shouldn't have said that. I went too far. But, you know, in all the years I've done stand-up, I like to think that the good shows and the great shows have certainly outweighed the few mistakes I've made on stage, you know. Could a guy like Rickles get away with his material today? It's interesting because when I talked to you earlier before we did this, I was thinking about that. You know, Rickles was a product of his time. And I, I, I saw him a couple of years before he died, and he was still great. But, yeah. you know, he was still doing that Asian caricature he did from probably the Korean War, maybe World War II. Oh, Germany got the back. Oh, you know. Yeah. And the black guy goes, hey, you know, doing that whole Uncle Tom, hey, the black guy. What about it? You know, can that, first of all, I don't know if Don came along today, if that's what he would be doing, if that stuff would work. But it's like looking at Lenny Bruce's stuff. You know, we both love Lenny. We both yeah. appreciate Lenny. Lenny was a genius. But if you look at a lot of the stuff today, would it be shocking? Would it be funny? Um, you know, I, and I think these guys would have changed and adapted. Well, I don't think I don't think Lenny today, if he did the same exact material, would be as shocking or as out there compared to anybody else. I mean, you look at a guy like Chappelle or look at a guy like Bobby Slayton. You're, I've, I saw Lenny Bruce work. In fact, I, right. the first time I ever saw people walk out on somebody. Right. And, and you got and, to remember that if Lenny Bruce came along today or a lot of these guys came along today, um, 
Well, you look at a guy like Dave Chappelle, you look at a guy like Bill Burr, you look at a million comics, they might not be here if it wasn't for, you know, Lenny Bruce and George Carlin and Richard Pryor and even Eddie Murphy. And, well, what they did, whatever. what they did was they, yeah. raised, they raised the bar, okay? Right. In other words, and they lowered the expectations of what was proper. But uh, today, I would say that if Lenny Bruce were doing the same material that he did then, and he were up against a Dave Chappelle, they would say Dave Chappelle was the more edgy of the comedians. Yeah, but it's hard to say that kind of stuff because, yeah. again, they're a product of the times. And everything was different back then. You know, it's like, I remember I was playing Caesars Tahoe when you, they had a comedy club up there. Me and another comedian went to the main room, it's probably back in the 70s or 80s, to see Red Skelton. And Red was doing Clumpy Little Hopper, and he was doing all that stuff, and I find none of it funny. I, 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 my friend found none of it funny, and the audience was laughing because they grew up with Red Skelton. You know, a lot of that stuff is dated. It's not funny anymore mm -hmm. if, you, if, if you watch it. But if you grew up with it, then again, Charlie Chaplin, the Marx Brothers, you know, the Honeymooners, still funny. You know, I, I think a lot of stuff, it depends, you know, if, if you're from that era, if you grew up with it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's... So you're, think, you're, you're not in any way adapting your material? No. To, to, to the sensitivities of now? You would still do the same giant Chinese routines or would they be dated? Well, I'm playing the San Francisco Punchline in a few weeks. And, yeah. I, you know, now I talk about this, that I did all this stuff, but I still do some Asian jokes. I, I have Asian jokes in my head. I still have gay jokes in my head. What bothers me now is because of, I think when I'm watching, not just Trump, I'm not going to blame him or the white supremacists or the right wing or the people that anti-immigration. There's so much hatred and sexism and racism out there. When I see it, all I'm thinking is, hey, they're taking my act. I did this first. Everybody's stealing my show. Everybody's getting pressed by me. All these white supremacists are the running people over. Trump is exciting riots. I did this for years. <laughs> do, you, do you yell at the TV screen, that's my material? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's, everybody's stealing my act. Yeah, but you know, the you thing know? is, Bobby, there's something to be said, and I've often mentioned this, about intent. You know, you, whenever people watched you perform, Nobody felt you hated anybody, but oh, that you were just not, not, that you not were, most but, people. But that, some, but that you were making fun of everybody. Right. You know, you were an equal opportunity offender, and right. I and I think that 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 counts for something. Intent is is very important to the way in which you say the joke, the way you present it, the way you go after the people in the joke, right. and your stuff was just so relentless that you made Chinese people funny. Because let's face it, there's something funny about Chinese people. There's something funny about Jewish people. There's something funny about Italian people. Right. Uh, and uh, we in this country at one time, you know, vaudeville was filled with dialect comics. And right. people who would make fun actually of their own people. All right? I mean, yeah. look at Step and Fetch It. I mean, the, right. he was a brilliant comic. And the right. reason he consi got considered to be a stereotype wasn't because he set the stereotype, because all the other people that came along and tried to imitate him created the stereotype. Right. Well, Eddie, but, you know, Rochester on the Jack Benny show. or uh, Well, Rochester was different. Rochester on the Benny show, because Benny was a very liberal person, was right. never portrayed really. He was the servant, but he was never kind of portrayed as the servant. Right. He was the observer of this asshole. Right. Okay, and then he was always commenting on it, and the joke was always pulled on Benny. Uh, right. So Rochester was, was different in that respect. Well, you know, the vaudeville, you know, because if you could see old kinescopes and listen to old, um, you know, recordings of the, the Yiddish theater and, and, and vaudeville, and, you know, is some really interesting, very... I can't even do blackface anymore. That was my whole opening. <laughs> it works for Jolson. But I the, try to do let, it. Let's, let's just say Bobby Slayton were up for a job at Saturday Night Live. I know that's impossible at your age because it's an ageist program. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. But if you were, do you think they could then go back to your material and say, we can't hire you because look look at what you did, you know? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You know, I mean, I never at, at, at your that. age, you can keep doing it and go fuck you. You know, it's a little late for me to stop. All the, right. uh, my entire history is out there. You know, right. so why kill the goose that you got the golden egg? Right. Well, like I said, I'm not working that much anymore. I'm happily semi-retired. So, 
you know, there's nobody can really hurt but me. But wait a minute, how do you feel? How do you say you're semi-retired? How do you feel about that truly? Because I am retired because the business retired me and there is no radio business out there right. any longer. And uh, I'm upset by that. I would like to be working. How do you, you know, feel about it? I'd like to be working too and the business kind of retired me. But at the same time, look, you know, I never had that hit TV show. I've done a lot of little shows, a lot of little parts of movies. But if I was playing theaters and traveling around the country or the world, making as much in a night as I was making in a, a month playing some horrible comedy club, you know, I basically got burnt out, you know. Uh, like I said, I'm going to San Francisco in a few weeks, one of the few places I still love to work. And I do one or two morning shows. But, you know, they used to trot you around, get up in the morning, do the morning radio, and then do... A, a drive time afternoon, good, good, good afternoon, Austin. And they come back and do a show. They get up the next morning and do another show. And, you know, it's like coach and the planes get canceled. And, you know, you get some drunk bachelorette party. It's all fine. I got paid very well for this. But after a while, it begins to wear on you. You know, I, I would come home. Uh, I had a wife at the time. I was raising my daughter. When my wife was gone, my daughter grew up. And then I had a sick dog to take care of. I'm in, I'm out. I gotta, you know. So it's like, I just like being home in my own house. Um, I wish I could have retired. But, you know, again, I'm not fully retired. I'm, uh, if you look at my website, bobbyslayton.com, I get a few theaters in Florida in November. I got the comedy club in Rochester, New York in November. I got the punch on. I'm working um, and almost as much as I want to, just not making as much as I want to. But what really pisses me off, there's all these clubs that I don't really hear from anymore. And it's not because of the material I do. I don't sell a ton of tickets, and there's a lot of new comedians with Netflix specials that sell more tickets than I do. So it's fine. It's, it's not the club's fault. It's not my fault. So, uh, you know, I'm having a good time cleaning out closets, swimming, and playing my drums. Have you, you, try, have you tried to get a Netflix special? No, I couldn't care less. You know what the problem is with a Netflix special? Why? Is that, first of all, to do one, you have to go around to all these clubs and work on the material. And I'm not getting a lot of work in these clubs. And I don't want to work a lot in these clubs. And then to do a Netflix special, if you watch them, these people are playing beautiful theaters. I just watch Bill Burr live at the Albert Hall. I'd be a little bit jealous. Brilliant comic. Um, and, and they're playing big theaters. I don't think I could sell a big theater. So where am I doing this special? You know, in your living room? Say so it's like, and, and, and by, on top of all that, when you write I got a Netflix special for you right out of that. Bobby Slayton in his living room. And yeah, then you get, get about 20 people in your living room and do your act. Well, what's the name did that? I love her. I can't remember her name. She did that with her parents. And her parents, uh, um, oh, my God. Um, yeah, it's been done. But, um, yeah, like I said, when you do a Netflix special, then you have to have another hour of new material. And I just don't feel like writing all this new material. I kind of feel... Like almost everything yeah, but, is but you done could, you could you could burn off a lot of the old material. That that's what this a lot. My Showtime special, and I I, I I when I did that, I got it. This been six seven years ago. Um, um, when I did that special, um, I forgot what it was called. What was it called? Raging Bully. No, that was my CD. I don't even remember what it was called. Yeah. Um, but when I did, I born to be Bobby, because mm -hmm. I had a tattoo on my back. Yeah. I had the tattoo done. I, I, well, for the opening of the special. But um, when I did that, I was putting off a lot of material that had my first three CDs, and I got dozens of people complaining, oh, he's doing a lot of old material. So I burnt off and, and, and did all that stuff. And all the new stuff I seem to come up with is either topical or, you know, other people have done similar well, things. Well, people, people have to realize that when you do a special, like a Netflix special or something like that, that you, you are burning off a lot of material you can't really do again because you go to a club and they've heard, they've heard it already. They want well, new... I, remember, I remember one time, it was maybe our studio hall or the Johnny Carson show. It, I, I did a show, and you know you do five minutes of stand-up. And mm -hmm. I went, it was Seattle Improv, and I went on stage and did an hour, and some guy was signing CDs after the show, and the guy comes up to me and says, hey, you're really good, but you did the same material. On our city last week, I did four or five minutes on our city. I just did an hour. So, so yeah, you, should, you know, you, you certainly can't go back and do that Netflix special. So I don't have the wherewithal or the the energy or maybe the talent to write do an hour. That's why I watch these guys like Dave Chappelle or Bill Burr or Whitney Cummings. You know, they just did a special last year. 
you know. Well, there was there was a period in your there was a period in your life, Bobby, where you were working so much that I many times you would say to me, "I just got to get off the road. I can't take this any longer." That he just you were you were you were the epitome of the road comic. Yeah, I don't think anybody anybody outside of maybe Jay Leno, although he doesn't do as many he doesn't do clubs anymore. But I was at the stage time that I had, and it wasn't. Yeah, I remember remember years ago reading this interview. That was DeGeneres, and she said, she like, maybe before she got her talk show, she says, yeah, you know, I was on the road for like seven years, and I was burnt out. Well, I was on the road for 40 fucking years, you know, and really burnt out. And I was on the road five out of six weeks, you know, yeah. and would come home and would feel so bad not seeing my daughter grow up that when I was home, I'd get up every morning at 7 o'clock, I would take her to school, I'd make her lunch, I'd pick her up from school, I'd take her to Disneyland. So it was like nonstop. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, not sorry, I, was working I mean it, it's like the dream of every comic okay that I knew who was on the road because m- most of them while they were road comics were just road comics because they wanted to get somewhere not because right. they that's how they made their living you made right. your living as a road comic yeah uh, but, know, but but that you you had the same dream they all had I want to get a series so I don't have to leave LA exactly you and, 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 and I, you know what? And there were a bunch of pilots that I did that just didn't go. Well, yeah, I thought your best that I that I saw because I had to edit your your demo reel was right. you as the Pink Panther, the voice of the Pink Panther. You know, I, I'm writing this book that I'm never going to finish. But yeah. that would have been a great. That was great, and CBS did that, and it would have gone. What, what it was was it was they they did a Roger Rabbit thing in which the Pink Panther was animated, right. but the right. rest of it was just the regular world, and the voice of the Pink Panther was Bobby Slayton. Right. Well, it was funny because it was right after Roger Rabbit, and it was you know, you know animation, and you know they did that before with you know Uncle Remus, they did it before with you know with Sail, uh, right. the thing with um, a big Crosby where they're dancing with the mouse and. Uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, it's been done before, but uh, it's been done a lot. But it, it was really well done. And when I went to read for the Pink Panther, the voice, you know, they wanted like a James Bond, David Niven, you know, a Sean Connery kind of suave, debonair. And when, I, when my agent set me up for it, the CBS goes, well, we love Bobby, but he's the last voice we would ever imagine for the Pink Panther. So I guess they went through every actor, every voice actor, every major celebrity, every every busboy, every part-time waiter actor, and they couldn't find the voice of the Pink Panther. So they said, oh, what? Bring Bobby in. What the hell? Bring him in. And they said my voice was so wrong for this that they gave it to me because it was exactly, you know, against type, and it made it very funny. My it, voice it, 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 was, it was the perfect voice for the Pink Panther. Well, that show would have gone, but they had changed... Um, uh, Terry Hatcher was in that. They, they changed presidents at CBS, and that happened to me a few times, you know, uh, with pilots. But, you know, the other ones I never started, which was great. I never wanted to be Seinfeld. I always wanted to be Jason Alexander or Michael Richards. I, I go, you know what, that's enough work for me. It's a big enough yeah. picture. I don't want my name up there. If the show sucks, it ain't me. I'm just a, I'm just a guy helping out. You know, I'm the guy next door, the crazy guy downstairs, I'm the wacky uncle. But, um, <laughs> I, I've done enough of those pilots. They just never went. What can I tell you? Wow. You know, it's, so, uh, so seeing yourself in this in this period of time now, where you're semi-retired, uh, does that bother? You? Does it bother you at all? I mean, really, is there yeah. something in you that really, yeah. you know? But you know what? A lot of it is. Again, it's you know, I I, I could write a whole new hour, and where am I going with? Well, here's like, the thing. Here's the thing. I I don't understand ageism in comedy, and here's why I don't understand it. Because because yeah. funny is funny. I don't care if you're 90. I don't care if you're 10. Funny is funny. But and you don't want and, to know something? There's a, there's a thing in the comedy clubs now, and I'm not going to tell you who started it because I don't know for sure. One of the major club owners, they don't want comics my age playing the clubs because they're trying to bring in millennials and younger people. When young people see an old guy on stage and old people in the audience, they're not going to go back to this place. They want their own club, their own place. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. The reason a guy like Lewis Black or, or if it was a lot of George Carlin or whatever would still be working was because they were playing theaters and they had a giant audience. The comedy clubs now, it, a lot of people my age aren't going to comedy clubs. So that's the problem. Okay, but here, 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 here's the point. You brought up Lewis Black. I was thinking the other day, when's the last time you saw Lewis Black do his act on television? Well, he's on once in a while. He's always popping up on the He's on shows. once in a while, but not like he was. 
And I think, you know, I think he's one of the best comics alive. I think you're one. Of, I think you are singularly the most classic, best stand-up comic in the business, period. Well, I, I mean, would, as, I, as I would, a pure stand-up. There's a lot of guys, a few guys that are better now, but it's fine. I don't need to be the best. No, I mean, but, Chappelle but is terrific, and Bill Burr is terrific, and all those guys are terrific. But if I wanted to go to just a classic stand-up comic, you're it. You're the epitome of it. Yeah, well, there's a lot of old guys like you that don't leave their apartment and don't come see me. Well. So that's the problem. <laughs> my friends are either dead or in Florida. It happened to the Smothered Brothers. I, I remember they were telling me that their audience stopped going to Vegas, you know? Yeah. Morris Griffin's gone. You know, Mrs. Miller is gone. Um, but but David Brenner told me the same thing, that, you know, he went from making 75000 a week to 10000 a week playing comedy clubs, and he wasn't drawing because his fan base was either dead or, moved, like I said, moved, moved away. Or they don't want to be in a comedy club with bachelorettes and people on their cell phones and crappy food and DUIs and no place to park. You know, so the, the days of those big, you know, vacancy showrooms are kind of dying. Um, yeah. And it's the younger crowd that's going on now, which is fine. I get it. Yeah. You know, am I a little angry? No, I don't have time. I got another good 10, 20 years. You know, my girlfriend and I go out for dinner every night and knock off a bottle of wine. As soon as I'm finished with your dumb interview, I'm going to go. You know, work out in my gym. I have a guy. I, I have a good time being retired. You have a good life. You've always had a good life, Bobby. You know, I mean, uh, and they've been several different lives too. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, your and, days as being you know, the family man is no longer exists. You're now, you know, back to having a girlfriend and doing that sort of thing. Right. Well, you know, when my wife died, it's been, you know, it's almost four years already. April's gonna be four years. My wife's gone, and. Uh, you know, my girlfriend's husband died five years ago. I told you that story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like she, she lives around the corner from me. I met her at her husband's funeral. I mean, it's an amazing <laughs> story. And her and I, you know, and then when I see, uh, you know, people I opened up for, Rick Ocasek, I opened for the cars of the old world up in San Francisco. And Eddie Money opened for many, many years. And so I see people all around me, not that much older than me, yeah. dying. Yep. So I'm like, well, you know what? I can't sit and complain about fucking showbiz. I'm not going to let that define me. It gets a little depressing, but I'm still working. And you know what? Woody Allen called me last month. I think I told you. He flew me to Spain yeah. to do I did to do two lines in his latest movie, which might not get released here because of all that trouble he had, but um, which I think was bullshit, but that's a whole other conversation. But I'm going, you know what? I'm working. I got a, uh, a couple of other things on HBO coming out that I'm not supposed to talk about till the release. So... I'm working. Yeah. I'm keeping busy, so it's fine. Yeah, uh, and and uh, well, I think the Woody Allen picture will probably get released here. I mean, it's. I think they've already got a distributor here, so. Well, yeah. hopefully, but you know, again, I have two lines in the movie. There's another sad situation. I mean, we could get into that, but you I know, don't want to get into it. That's for another time. I mean, I think what's happened to Woody is is horrid. You yeah. Know. Well, uh, it's, it's from everything I've read and from everybody I've talked to that knows him. And, <laughs> Whatever, you yeah. know, I'm sticking up for him. Um, maybe that's why I'm not working. Me and Scarlett Johansson, it's over for us. <laughs> Scarlett called me the other day. Bobby, what are we going to do? I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> you know? I like to carry up, but I got a girlfriend. You know, I can't help you. Hey, listen, so, now, yeah. now that we got the Skype working, we should do this more often. I, I just love talking to you, you know? Well, I don't, it's not like I'm busy doing anything else. Um, yeah. You know, and I, I come to New York more often, but my my free apartment, which I don't want to get into, that's <laughs> gone now. <laughs> well, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, well, it, it probably he heard your latest comedy and decided to hang himself. So uh, that's a bit yeah. way we can hint at who that was. Yeah. Uh, but that's an amazing. That's another amazing story. But uh, let's uh, let me call you in a couple. Let me write you in a couple of weeks or text you, and and we'll do this again because. It's a perfectly perfect signal now. We, last time we tried to do you on Skype, it was like we were looking at the, the moon pictures, you know. At AT and T, now I got Spectrum. Maybe if I give them a plug, they'll give me a few new cable box for yeah. free or something. Anyway, but anyway, yeah, I'll do it anytime you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you go to my, you'll see I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm around. Well, listen, stick around after we stop talking here. I just want to say goodbye to you. And right now, we'll say goodbye to Bobby Slayton. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah, I hope I shed some light on this whole problem. You know, it's it's, it's getting so disappointing. You know, Louis C.K., you, you can't oh, even... Oh, oh, don't even start me on that one, you know. Uh, 
Okay, we'll talk about that another time. But apparently, you can't even lock a girl in the hotel room, take off your clothes, and jack off. I guess that's out now. What am I going to do? There's none of that. No blackface. No wonder I can't do another special. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby Slayton, ladies and gentlemen, you can all applaud now. Okay, thank you. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, that's Bobby Slayton, ladies and gentlemen. I always love to talk with Bobby. Now let me uh, let me uh, let me do a few things here. I got to open up the Skype line. Which uh, I don't, I, I can't open until I'm ready to do the uh, the show itself and do the do the Skype calls, because people have a tendency to call even though they see that I'm not available, that I'm invisible. But I'm not invisible because you can call even when I'm invisible. Don't you just hate that? <laughs> anyway, let me. Uh, well, it it says live now. Hmm, that's because uh, Jack. Bishop probably forgot to turn it off. Anyway, uh, it's time now for you to call. Thank you, Bobby. We'll do Bobby again. I love having Bobby on the show. I, I like Bobby, right? Uh, I think it's another feel-free night tonight. Oh, 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 oh. I hate the first ring on this phone because it's so fucking noisy that it's... Uh, let's see here. This is Charlie Wallace, so he's already got a place for himself. Uh, in the uh, there we go and uh, there hello Charlie hi Alex a different angle on you this evening yeah because all my rooms my desk and everything's all packed up oh yeah oh yeah you're you're moving back to Texas <laughs> yeah well, t tell them why you're moving back to Texas well because you can I guess yeah I mean I'm retired I don't have I don't have a job here, so, yeah. I'm just uh, going back home, basically. I spent 44 years in Austin. So. Well, what brought so you to, what took you to Arizona, of all places? My girlfriend, her son lived here, and, and uh, we were, uh, you know, we were both retired, so we decided to move out here to be with near him. Yeah. And that broke up. And so, you have no and reason, you have no, re you have no reason to be there anymore. And all your yeah. friends are probably in uh, in. Uh, they're still in Austin. They're yeah. still in Austin. You know, I got to tell you, I think you're making a good move because I I certainly wouldn't want to be living there. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, the idea. Oh, it's wonderful, Mason. Huh? Let me see here. Let uh -oh. me. Uh, we got oh, okay. we got uh, Josh here. Let me see here, Josh Wheeler. Give him a little spot here. Let's see here. Wait a minute, Josh. We need you to turn your camera on. Yeah, it's coming. I there think. we go. There we go. There's there's our boy. Yeah, good signal tonight, by the way, Josh. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, Stay yeah, safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, so yeah. So I mean, I you know, like I I think I wrote you and said to you that that I felt that uh, um, uh, it was um, a pretty. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Everybody's coming back almost into their same places that they were last week. Um, but I think I wrote you and I said that I, I felt that you were making a good move because I, uh, I couldn't see how anybody would want to live in fucking Arizona. Uh, and and it, people say, well, do you have Texas? That, is that much better? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I have to say that when I lived in Houston, that was one of the best cities I ever lived in. Okay? So, you know. Oh, yeah, the people there vote for assholes, but I'm not holding that against them. You know? But I, I really, I felt it was one of those cities that when I left it, I felt very bad about leaving it because I left a lot of good friends, a lot of good memories yeah. in that town, and Jack Bishop all by himself. So, uh, you know, that, that was the, uh, so anyway, so you're, you're, when are you, when are you moving? When are you doing the big move? Oh, look, um, Jeff's doing a strip. Da, 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 da. Well, my, my furniture's moving on Friday. But I'm I'm heading out on Monday. Who, oh, wait a minute. Who's heading out on Friday? Oh, the furniture is heading furniture. out on Friday. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm doing one of those where I have a, a relocation cube. I pack all my stuff in the cube. They come in, pick up my stuff, and ship it to Austin. And then what? I follow in my own car. I don't have to, you know. Okay. Well, that, uh, how much does that cost, one of those cubes? Uh, just one of them costs about... 
and then they charge you for the trip, right? No, that's the whole charge. The whole charge? So all, all yeah. of your apartment, you got into one of those cubes? Yeah, well, it's just in a one-bedroom apartment, yeah. Yeah. So, Me, yeah. I'd have to have about 20 of those cubes. Yeah, you know. just for your, your, C, your DVD collection. Well, there. what happened when we moved in, Marjorie had a, um, had a, a, a what do you call, storage locker. And I think she figured she'd unload it and load it in here. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So most of the stuff that was in that storage locker got here. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. my storage locker out in California that's being looked at by Damian Chaplin uh, uh, is, uh, is not nearly empty. So, you know, I've, and I, I somehow I've got to start emptying that out too. But but I but I don't have any room here for anything because Marjorie has all her stuff here. <laughs> so, yep. So I you know so she and, and so it was she but I mean she she had some nice pieces and you know made for a very nice warm apartment you know, um, and uh, she was always been to buying old furniture and old stuff you know and it really worked well and she had a lot of it redone <coughs> sofas redone chaise lounges redone, so. You know, I can't exactly complain about it, but anyway. Huh? I used to have all kinds of tools and screws and nuts and parts and material and this and that. And you know what? I well, still have. I you, can't get rid of it. You, really? Really? Well, I used to have nuts, but she took them. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but anyway. Um, so I, uh, 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 so we're we're here tonight. Uh, I uh, I decided to take last night off. I just have been so fried lately that I just decided, you know, I do eight hours a week, and Damien does two, and Jack does four. So I figured I'm entitled to a day off now and then, you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but, you know, if, if, I just, you know, I just, I, I don't want to get to the point where I don't like doing this, you know. So today I got an inspiration. I called Bobby and we did an interview with Bobby and that, that came off okay. That was good, you know. Yeah. And, uh, uh, did you enjoy doing that? Huh? Did you enjoy doing Oh, yeah. That? Well, I always, I, I enjoy talking oh, to my I, friends. You I know, I enjoy watching it. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy talking to Bobby. I enjoy talking to Bubbles. I enjoy talking to uh, um, uh, Stephen Pearl. You know, I enjoy St talking to Durst. I enjoy talking to my ex-wife. Which, by the way, I should mention uh, that uh, this is my what anniversary would this be? What? Well, let's see. I was married in nineteen. When I married Ronnie in nineteen. 68 maybe does that sound right to me I don't know how many years ago would that be 40 51 51 yeah oh. hmm. 68 well, I think yeah. today is like our 51st anniversary or something like that uh, we were married uh, on the 18th of September actually she wrote me and said I, want, I wish you a happy birthday and I wrote back to her and I said but it's not my birthday, she said. But it is our anniversary. <laughs> now, I, I somehow think that after you've divorced a wife, you can forget about when the anniversaries were, right? I mean, there's no big sin. It was a big sin when we were doing our depositions for the, for the case that we're in. <laughs> and they said, so uh, when, did you, uh, when did you get married? And I couldn't come up with the date and the uh, lawyer for the landlord kind of hit my wife in the shoulder and went, just like a man, you know. Um, we don't we, we don't remember significant dates like that. Women all oh, women always do. Yeah. Marjorie had something marked down, anniversary, <laughs> and it was like in I don't know July or something like that. And I said, but our anniversary, I know this. Our anniversary is in March. And she said, yeah. And I said, I, I, I think that's our, right? And she said, yeah. I said, then what's that anniversary? She says, of our first date. 
you know, I said, do you want to you do do you want to celebrate our first fuck? You know, I mean, what 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 is this? Why why do we have to celebrate every single little thing? You know, going on. So anyway, I uh, but um, uh, I I want to get. I'll tell you uh, the other thing that was getting to me is is that I really would like to get some new callers. Not that you guys aren't terrific and wonderful, <laughs> but I, it would be nice if we had more new callers so that, for instance, we didn't just what? have three right now. We didn't have just three right now. We had a, quite a few. And all these people go on the chat room and they talk and they complain about the show and everything else, and they never call it. You know? Um, uh, but uh, if you'd like to call, uh, there are several ways to do it. Let me mention this to you. You can go to gabnet.net. That's our that's our, our web page, okay? And at gab, gabnet.net, in fact, uh, I could probably show you the page uh, if I if I went to it. I have to, uh, however, um, get the uh, let's see here window capture. Which one is this? Uh, uh, I want, uh, let's see here, Google Chrome GabNet. There we go. Okay. All right. So I can show you now where, where there we go. Th there's the page. Okay. There's the web page. See, we're even broadcasting on it if you look there. And if you uh, look over on the right-hand side, it says, what is a citizen panel? And it, it's got a way that you can actually go to GabNet uh, Live. Uh, and you can actually click on that little blue square, and if you have your GabNet up, you just click on that, and it will dial the show, okay? And you can talk to us. Or you can use a phone number, which is, hold on a second, let me, let me do this. Let me see. Can I bring this up? Nah, I guess that doesn't, that doesn't do it. I, I don't have enough room. But anyway, uh, it, has, uh, a, it has underneath the GabNet Live, down below there, a phone number, which if you want to use a phone number, you can use it. But those are all the different ones. So over on the right-hand side, just a whole primer on how to, how to get a hold of us and how to call this program and be part of this program. And then, then I don't have to sit around complaining that you guys aren't, aren't calling, okay? And we, you know, I would like to see, it's not that I don't like the people we have. I just want more people like the people we have who are, uh, are good at, at talking this over and, and filling, a, filling up a full panel every night. <clears throat> Hi, Josh. You're smiling. What are you smiling about? Oh, I don't have to work today. You don't, don't have to? Uh, you, you didn't have to work today or you don't have to work today, meaning you don't have to work tomorrow? Don't have to work tonight. Don't have to work tomorrow night. Oh, okay. And why is that? Well, I'm, that's the schedule that we're on. I work... Uh, so I... I work every other weekend, so then we get days off during the week. Oh, I see. Okay. But then in the fall, which right now, I, I move it around a little bit, and I don't work Sunday because that's when I praise my religion on Sunday. So, yes, sir. Uh, and, and what religion is that? I go to the church to the NFL. <laughs> I'm a consecrated member. Consecrated oh. member of the church of the NFL. Oh. Oh, very yeah, good. I'm on the board and everything. Okay, good. So, you know, no work today, no work tomorrow. Yeah. So, anyway, so uh, nobody's calling, but I just uh, thought maybe if I made the plea, you would. Because I would, I, I, we, I still have like six, six, in four, three more slots I would like to fill up tonight. Um, no fill. No fill tonight, by the way. Mm. So, um, so, that means it's Trump been. Is, it's Trump been, is great. Huh? Trump is great. Changed my mind. You changed your mind. You're gonna. You're gonna oh. the, the part of Phil is being played tonight by Josh. <laughs> yes, Josh. Yes. Yes, I understand. Uh, Trump is great, isn't he? Oh yes, outstanding. Is it my is it my imagination, or lately has he been kind of less offensive? Mm. Or am I just not watching the news enough? I don't know. Maybe. You know? I mean, today, th today I think somebody asked about what do they feel about, about uh, Netanyahu and the fact they might be losing the election over there. I don't know. Has he lost it yet? Yeah, what, what became of that? Did he lose? Well, it, yes, Jeff. No one won. No one won. 
No one. God, they're lucky in Israel. We. I wish that would happen here. Right. Imagine that. That we have no president. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't know what the hell to do. You have to get a certain percentage or something, and if you don't get that, you're not president. And they're both apparently right around, you know, 99% of 50-50. And it's not enough. You, you've got to... you got to go over the 50. you got to go over the line, whatever that means. In other so, in other words, Netanyahu won in what Trump would concern or consider to be a landslide. <laughs> Thank you. The biggest victory Trump. ever. Wow. Many, many people say so. Many, many people. Many, many, many people. people. <laughs> many people like Obama say. Obama or whatever. Oh, boy. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. So, uh, anyway, today they asked him about Netanyahu, and he said, well, he says, I am just a friend of the Israeli people. It's not the prime minister that matters to me. Which is kind of changing his tune, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, <laughs> Yeah. That's the only news I heard today. Otherwise, I paid no attention to the news. What? I think we're at the point where, for most of us, mm -hmm. we think that Trump doesn't really count <laughs> anymore. And whatever the hell he wants to say, who gives a shit? It, it's just too much bullshit anyway. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, he still has, he still has this power, you know, and he can really fuck us over. <laughs> That's true. And, and well, we can't do anything about and, it. And we can't do anything about it. You know what he said? He said uh, he said with this uh, thing with, um, uh, uh, what's his name, the, the Supreme Court Justice. Um, Kavanaugh. 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 That uh, Kavanaugh should sue for libel. <laughs> Jesus. Not realizing uh, that uh, he, Kavanaugh can't sue for shit. That being the public figure he is, and the po political figure he is, he he can't be he can't sue anybody for libel. It's impossible. Uh, Trump can't sue anybody for libel. President cannot sue people for libel. Uh, however, you can't sue him. In other words, if uh, Donald Trump said Alex Bennett rapes little babies, I can't sue him. And if I say he rapes little babies, he can't uh, he can't sue me. Uh, that's just the way it is. So um, uh, all, all I'm saying is, is that uh, uh, you know he says a Kavanaugh should sue, and I'm going. Oh, I didn't turn the light on tonight. Oh, girlfriend. Oh no, no, we're not on the air. Girlfriend. No wonder well, nobody. Called. We're not officially on the air, but we are <laughs> now. There we go. Anyway, um, where where am I? So anyway, so, yeah. So he can't he can't sue, and and Trump right. Trump should know things like this, but he doesn't know things like this. Yep. He doesn't know shit. <laughs> yeah. He thinks the Justice Department should come to Kavanaugh's aid. That 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 the he thinks the Justice Department is supposed to be his personal lawyer or anybody that he wants their personal lawyer. Really? Instead of the people's lawyer. Yeah, he doesn't understand what the Justice Department is about. Really? Yeah. Yeah, well... I mean, he said that. He said the Justice Department to defend Kavanaugh. Well, he's got that toady in the Justice Department, you know, who's yeah. doing all his bidding. So, you know... He's got lots of them. Hmm? Well, he's got lots of them. Yeah. Yeah. But this is all bullshit because... Obama got a good deal from Netflix, and Michelle wrote a book. And that's bullshit. They what? got paid. Wait, what's bullshit? That's bullshit. Was he is he complaining about that? <laughs> yeah, he had that big Twitter thing. What was it yesterday yeah. or the day before, where he wanted to stop the investigation into what was I don't know whatever the fuck they're looking into now, and instead investigate Obama's shady Netflix deal and uh, Michelle's shady book deal. Look into wait, that. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Follow that money. What shady Netflix deal? <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. He made, he made a deal with Netflix. How's that shady? They made it public. That wasn't shady. Yeah. I don't know. 
They said how much it was. They said how much after he was out of office. They said how much. It's amazing that the man who made a shit ton of money making a TV show is mad about another guy making a shit ton of money making a fucking TV show. (laughs) Maybe that's show business. I don't know anything about it. What, what what is what is his 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 hard on for Obama, which is ridiculous? Okay, it supposedly goes back to the correspondence dinner. Yeah, and the fact that Obama made fun of him, which is what you do at the at the at the correspondence dinner. That's and, why you should be there. And ever since then, he's had this hard on. For Obama, and to say that the shady Netflix deal, what shady Netflix deal? You, you, you could probably find the tweets. They were from like a day or two ago. I, I don't think I could get them on my phone. I might be able to. I don't know, because I have his ass blocked, so I can never see anything that he writes. I, so I don't know, but they, it was on the news. They talked about it on, you know, the morning news programs and whatever, and that's teacher that's his new thing he wants the obamas investigated for their you know uh shady business deals or whatever i, fuck, I mean you know I mean, wait a minute, but i don't see you know in in your wildest imaginations how the netflix deal can be shady yeah i mean that uh, it's, it's just donald trump is just i think that he has to know in his mind that regardless of what he tells himself that when they're all dead and gone 30 or 40 years from now obama will be remembered quite fondly by people and donald trump will not be and he's a fucking insecure well, well, man you know uh, well, that, obama, that, that's what it is obama will be remembered more than trump because obama is significant in that he was the first black president right and so consequently even if he had been a shitty president even if yeah. he had been, even if he had shady Netflix deals, uh, uh, Obama would still go down in the history books as the first black president. So he will always be remembered. He'll always be a question uh, on a civics test, you know, in in high school. Uh, so yeah, yes, uh, Jeff. Well, I th- I think also uh, if you go and take a bunch of kids uh, twenty years from now. They might want to listen to what Obama said because, A, it was very well written and, and articulate, mm-hmm. and, and it was informative. If, if you take any of the crap that Trump has said over the last five years, he's been, or four years, well, it's, it's garbage. Yeah. Trash, garbage. Well, I can see the question on a history test uh, in the high school. Like, which president said he'd grab women by the pussy? See, that would be the, <laughs> the, the question you would ask. Oh, there you go. That's what makes him significant. He's the president who would grab women by the pussy. Thank God. Oh, boy. It, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I don't know what the exact wording was of the tweets, but it was one of his... I can't remember if this was two days ago or if it was yesterday. I think it was the day before. Uh, and it might have been like the evening before that because they talked about maybe the next morning. But he went on one of his, you know, 15, 20 minute tirades where he's firing off, you know, one right after the other. And in the middle of all that, there was three or four that was basically all about he would like the DOJ to investigate the Obamas. Well, let me see. Or may- maybe he didn't call let for the see. DOJ. Maybe he wanted the oh, media to do it Obama. or whatever. But, you know, shady <laughs> Netflix. Yeah, it was. He was tweeting about them. So. He's back on. He must be off the Clintons for a while, for you know, like the next fifteen minutes or whatever. And he's back to the Obamas. Let's see here. Oh yeah, Trump suggests investigation into Obama Netflix deal. <laughs> That's a video. Uh, uh, what the former president first lady's deal is worth, and what they say. Donald Trump says, "Ah, oh, here we go. I want to just find Obama <clears throat> Netflix. What former president Trump pushes? Okay, all right." Here, 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 here's the story, folks, uh, as it appears right here uh, on, my, uh, on my web screen. See? There it is. Uh, uh, let's see here. Investiga- uh, t- Trump pushes for investigation into Barack Obama's ridiculous Netflix deal. 
okay, and book deal. Uh, President Donald Trump wants Democrats to pay less attention to him. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what I'm uh, uh, to him, and a little more attention to the various deals former President Barack Obama has inked since leaving office. Trump 73 lashed out the House, House Judiciary Committee in a Twitter spree on Monday and once again urged them to investigate the book and Netflix deals Obama has signed, both of which are reported to have price tags in the millions. House Judiciary has given up on the Mueller report, sadly for them after two years and $400 million spent. Zero collusion, zero obstruction. Well, oh, God. that's not necessarily true. So mm -hmm. they say, okay, let's look into everything else and all the deals Trump has ever done in his lifetime, but it doesn't work out that way, he began. I have a better idea. Look into the Obama book deal or the ridiculous Netflix deal. Then look at the deals made by the Democrats in Congress. They, what, what is this? The man is rambles and rambles. Oh, here's the actual. Uh, here are the actual uh, uh, tweets. Uh, 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 okay. Um, let's see. House Judiciary has given up on the Mueller report. Sadly for them, after two years, blah, 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 I just read all that. It says, okay, let's look at everything else. The deals that Trump has done over his lifetime. You know something? It wasn't like Trump was this guy who was doing all kinds of things at the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, he came into office pretty broke. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and now he's able to make money. He's able to make a decent living. So you hold that against him? <laughs> You know. Well, that's that's the norm, whether you know you like it or not. And if you don't like it and you want to change it, then fine. But that's that's the norm. I mean, I don't think that Obama he hasn't maybe he hasn't put out his post office uh, memoir yet, has he? No. I mean, no. that's I didn't think he had. No. So it'll be coming out probably what another year or two years or you know whatever, and he'll probably get paid like. Ten million dollars. He didn't want. He probably that's does, the way that it is. He probably doesn't want to break into the sales of. Uh, by the way, Jeff, let's see a little more of your face. You, you, All right. You, you look like Kilroy was here. There oh. we go. Okay, that's. Bad. I brought it with me. Yeah. Um, so you know, I mean, uh, so so they so they're going to make money after they're out of office. Good for them. You know. Yeah, I mean that's 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 the way that it. <clears throat> that's just the way that it is, and 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 he will too. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, he will make a good deal of money um, selling his book that he has someone write for him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, to his peoples or whatever. You know, they'll yeah. pay their thirty bucks for their hardback Whoops. copy that's or a, whatever. And you know, a, that's a, I mean, hell, Sarah Palin made a good deal of money, and she never even got elected yet. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you know. Well, hello, Kevin. Hi, Alex. Hi, everybody. What does that say? Fuck ALS. <laughs> now, you don't have ALS, do you? No, my best friend just passed away from it, though. Oh, really? Oh, mm. too bad. Too bad. Yeah, in July. Oh, wow. That's too bad. By the way, I, I was I got some, mm. uh, some, some uh, messages from... Uh, from Phil, uh, his dog has cancer. Yeah, he's, he's feeling he's feeling very bad about. It. This is the dog that he rescued, his little rescue dog he found somewhere and gave this wonderful life to. Uh, and I, I I really felt bad about it, you know. And he feels horrible about it. He says I'm just feeling terrible about it. And uh, I wrote him back. I said, you know, I'm, it, 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 losing an animal dying on you is sometimes affects you more than even a close relative yeah. in the family. You know? Uh, so, anyway, I uh, I just thought I would pass that along. and We hope that his, uh, you know, I don't know what he's going to do about it. He says he's taking the dog to an oncologist. Wow. God, that's expensive. That's well, his little white dog there that he has there? Yeah, a little white dog. Yeah, a little cute Yeah, dog. yeah, yeah. He says, he says, I don't know if I'll get another one. And I don't blame you. You know, uh, after I lost my last bunch of cats, I think I stopped having pets because it just, you know, it didn't. 
it was at this <laughs> age. I'm not. You, they, they could mourn me because the cat. Uh, I'll be the cats will be around long after I'm gone. You know. But I, I don't. I don't want to get. I, I. I decided not to get any more pets after the last batch died. And uh, yeah. You know. Yes. It takes a while. Sometimes you come around. Sometimes you don't. It took us two years, and then all of a sudden, I guess it probably helped that I had a kid that wanted one. But you know, it took a couple years. Yeah, you felt real bad about it. Oh yeah. Yeah. How long? I had to, I had to literally put one dog to sleep, and that yeah. was the hardest thing I could ever think of doing. Yeah. I, I had to. Put my it, dad. Yeah. My dad couldn't even be there, and I was. I had to be there when it happened. And, it's just no fun at all. And well, then I put two cats to sleep, and it's just no good. Yeah. I had to put a cat. And actually, you know, you think yeah. about it, it's it's almost, they have it better because, you know, I watched my friend die a slow death with ALS, mm -hmm. and he got to the point where he was going to get the pill, and he was up in Oregon, and as a matter of fact, he lived right across from Lake Oswego, you know, Lake Oswego, where Ronnie is. Mm -hmm. And uh, my last time up there to see him, I drove right through Lake Oswego thinking about Ronnie. Yeah. And, uh, and and he was actually going to get the pill and going through the whole process of getting that pill Yeah. to, uh, you know, have it just in case. You know something? I you found think out from about a... euthanasia yeah. and, and, you know, putting a, a dog down or a cat down, when they're you know when they're done you know and not going through all the pain and all that yeah, crap yeah well, you think about that and it's you know it's not so insane it's not so it's crazy. time it's time for me to pull my obligatory joke which is of course that i put my cat down i told him he was better the dog was better than he was so but um boom boom, but -um -boom. yeah Shh. uh anyway let's see here we got we got uh, tony let me yeah. see if i can get uh, tony in here uh, come on, Tony. Here we go. Oh, there's Tony. Okay, I didn't even have to do anything. <laughs> just, he just popped right up in, yep. in what we can now call Tony's spot. Yeah. Uh, no, you know, I, um, uh, by the way, with that, uh, that uh, you know, the, the, the suicide pill, if you want to call it that, death with dignity pill, it isn't one pill. It's yeah, like, it's... it's like 50 pills. Wow. Wow. Ah. Uh... I was told by Ronnie it's 50 pills. I, I don't know for sure, but I I know it was a it was a whole process he had to go through psychological stuff and they had to he had to go through a month worth of stuff to just get a hold of being able to get it. Yeah. And he had full blown ALS. I mean, you know, it was was he kind of had he kind of have locked in syndrome? What's that? Does he have kind of locked in syndrome where you, you know he, he he can't communicate and whatever? Or was he? How was he? He had he had bulbar's bulbar's disease, which is where you lose your ability to talk. Okay. And eat. Yeah. You know, I was feeding him with a tube. Okay, when I so was slowly up there. everything was shutting down. Yeah, he he couldn't barely move his arms. He could walk and everything, but his his you know, in order for him to tell me everything was good, he went like this. Yeah, he lifted up his thumb and stuff, but oh boy, you know, and sometimes he'd fall when he was walking, and you know, I, 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 I just don't know what I would do in in that case. You know, I mean, I, for instance, I have Ronnie who is dying. Let's be honest about it. It's just she doesn't know when, and neither do any of us. So that's good, you know. Uh, but sometimes I wonder, I want to go out, I'd like to go out and see her. But I just, I, you know, I see her all the time doing Skype, right? So I don't know that I really need to. Um, but I, you know, I just, I don't, I'm not, I don't deal with things like this very well, you know? And, uh, I don't think anybody does. In fact, no, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. In fact, I just, had, I, you know, I struggle with it too because I wanted to go up there and see him all the time and I couldn't. But I did whenever I could, you know, and I went up there about every six months. I had somebody, Each time it was harder and harder, yeah. and leaving was even harder, and we were really, really good friends. And Yeah, and you know every time you leave them, that may be the last time you'll see them. Yeah, and right? it was. And it was. Yeah. Um, how soon after you saw him the last time did he die? 
uh, less than a month. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you have to see people in that shape, too. Boy, isn't this an uplifting show, folks? Hi, yeah, how see are what you, I'm everybody? Sorry, I didn't mean to bring the show down. No, that's okay. No, that's all right, because if you don't, I will. So, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I just did it for you, huh? Yes, Jeff. So my, my friend Charlie... He got cancer very quickly and uh, and died within uh, maybe two months or something. Like that. Mm-hmm. But he never told me. He didn't want to tell me. Oh. Uh, yeah. And finally, his wife calls me up. And I says, what's doing? She goes, when was the last time you've been over here? Oh, I don't know, about two weeks ago or so. Mm-hmm. She goes, well, Charlie's dying. I said, what? I had no idea. Mm. I said, why didn't he tell anybody? He doesn't want anybody to know. <laughs> you know? Was your father that way uh, uh, t- at home? No. Well, I can tell you what happened. It's funny you say that because, you know, I got to tell you something, too. By the way, you can all tune out now, folks. This is going to be the most depressing rest of the show you've ever heard in your Actually, life. Actually, you may laugh about this because oh, okay. I thought of you, Alex. You would have liked my dad. You thought of me? Somebody life. was dying and you thought of me. Okay, do I look that bad but, to you? No, no. no. <laughs> you, like, you have a good sense of humor like, like mm-hmm. you. You laugh. But you know what was funny, Wait a minute. You're freezing up. You got to move your. You got to oh, move. Oh. You got to move. You're not exactly making us laugh. Hold on. You got to move closer to the Wi Fi. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah. As soon as he gets close to the Wi Fi, he doesn't break <laughs> up, but he never learns this, oh, folks. Okay. He just wants to show us his shitty Is wallpaper. Any what? Any better? Yeah, that's better. You're much better. Okay. Funny you said that. When we got the bad news, they told me last because that my brother, my older brother, almost older sister knew. So they told him, you know, mm-hmm. you're dying. So then when we brought him home to die, right? Mm-hmm. This is dad, listen. He says, I know this is it. He says, I don't want to see a priest, but bring him over anyway if it help. Mm-hmm. Whatever, we brought him over. So then what was funny was I can see why Jeff's friend might have did that. We couldn't hide my father's death because he had the Alex trip back. You knew he was dying, Alex. He says, how can we hide it from anybody? Look at me, I can't eat. So I says, dad, I says, what, 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 did your, what did your father have? He had Trebek's pancreatic. Oh, he had pancreatic. Yeah. So it's not called was, Trebek's disease yet. I called, okay. my, my mother calls it now. Oh, he says, she says, Alex is living, Trebek. I said, I know, Mom. We watch it still. Thank God. But now he's in chemo again. Yeah. So you know what was funny that he said that? We couldn't hire him. Thank you know, you. but you. what was funny was there was cousins. My aunt Barbara calls and she says, "You know that bitch Carolyn, one of my cousins who she hates, she wants to come see Leo." She's talking to me. He says, "Did your father want to see him?" Because I said we don't let the cunt in. Really, she hates us. Jesus guys. Christ, your family really yeah. talks trash, yeah. don't they? Well, aunt Barbara has a. My, she's still from Brooklyn. I can tell you that. I said, "You know what I'll do, Babs?" I says, "I'll go over to my dad because mm-hmm. he's still coherent, mm-hmm. and we'll we'll run it by him." She says, "Yeah, do that." Give me the phone. I want to hear what he has to say. I put her on speaker. I says, Dad, can you hear me? You know what's going on. He says, yeah, I know what the fuck is going on. I'm not out there yet. Carolyn wants to see you. You know what he says? Over my fucking dead body. She didn't want to see us when we were alive. I don't want to see her now. Right. Don't, don't let her up. She says, well, I got your answer, mine. says, she ain't coming. Didn't, he didn't use, you know did he he use, did he use the word cunt at all? I'm just she wondering. She did. Oh. He didn't. He called her a bitch. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny. So actually, you want to laugh? I'm going to tell you something, Alex. My aunt Barbara was at the table. By the way, put, put your face brother. a we little. Went to, put, wait, 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 put your face a little more in the center uh, of the listen picture. Listen to this. I wanted to throw the spaghetti. They came. You know, after the cemetery, <laughs> we says everybody can go to the <laughs> restaurant. Right, I'm sorry, I just round Tony up, folks. You'll have to excuse me. Okay, yeah, you think because you're going to find this funny. So everybody okay. after the burial, come to the come to the eatery. We're going to you know, we're treating everybody. So. Of course, the Carolyn, who we don't see in 30 years, and the husband, the loafer, had to come for a lunch that we had to pay for. Do you know they took a fucking doggy bag home? I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I wanted to take the doggy bag and smack it out of my hands. By the way, my Aunt Barbara put the evil eye on her ass. By the way, your your picture's frozen, Tony. I don't know why. Should I move back? I guess move around somewhere. Go back. Let me get off the connection. I'll go to a different connection. Oh, okay. Well, anyway... I'm sorry, Alex. You got me all jazzed up now. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I did that. I'm beginning no, to regret it. We couldn't it. find it because I don't think I would want to tell people to tell you the truth unless I had to. Yeah, yeah. 
But anyway, your picture is frozen. I have no idea why. So. He's moving on mine. He's moving on yours, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. yeah. He's not moving on mine. I don't know why. Can you see me now? Everybody else is fine. Yes, Jeff. I wanted to change the discussion. Okay. Yeah. Charlie, or everybody. Yeah. What happened with war, with our potential Democrat president? Who's winning, 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 winning from New York the other day? Warren. What happened? Uh, I'm hearing things. Bad about Elizabeth him. Warren. What do you mean, Jeff? Well, you, you were in New York. What happened in Warren in uh, New York with Warren? Who me? Yeah. I don't know. She held a, 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 a rally in Washington Square. Is oh, all I heard. you know what? She uh, went on Colbert last night. And he kind of grilled her about the uh, uh, whether the we were going to be paying more taxes for the health care, and she wouldn't answer it. Because it's a fucking bad question. Well, but she's yeah. yeah. Pay more well, taxes, Bernie would answer. Have all those copays and stuff. But she answered Bernie would it. Answer it as much money. She so answered she was, it. She answered it well once before in the debates, I believe, in which yeah, she was I saying, "Yes, your taxes would go up." But the amount of money you would pay in taxes would not be as much as you're now paying for co-pays and uh, all the uh, all the things you have to pay for now. Deductibles. Deductibles right. and so on, yeah. And, and that's the best way to explain it. Of course, yes, taxes will go up, but you will not be paying as much as you have been paying. Right. Right? And that's what you should have done. Yeah. I, I thought she also said... The other day, when I heard her on, on on the radio or on TV, is that um, that she was trying to add a certain higher percentage for rich, what she calls very very rich people. Yeah, yeah. People who had over what fifty million dollars. Over fifty remember. million dollars. And I think I think that's something we can all agree with, can't we? I mean, after all, if you're making <laughs> if you're making um, fifty fifty million dollars, you have benefited that more than most from this society yeah. and you're just being asked to pay back a little bit. That's all. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. It's a tax on, on, on your good fortune. Okay? And it and it was like what, two percent? Yeah, minimum. I mean, yeah. and most rich people, one Charlie, you got it. Most most rich people wouldn't be bothered by it, you know, because uh, their attitude would be, eh, you know, so I got a little less money, you know. How many yeah, millions? It's a drop started? in the bucket. It's a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Um, but these are the people who benefited the most from the society, and they should be ha asked to pay back a little bit. That's all, plain and simple. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, well, I was trying to uh, express that in New York, she uh, she had a speech. Uh, I think there were twenty five thousand people came yeah, to see yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, had a good turnout on the street. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, down in the village, and uh, not only that, but at the end, anybody who wanted to get a picture of her, she stood there and waited. For I don't know how many people. Four and a half hours, I heard. Yeah. And she she smiled and said hello, and everybody took their picture of her. Yeah, and amazing. I, I, think now, the I, think, I think she's got a good shot at the nomination. I do, too. And, and also, she is like on the list. She's just right behind Biden now. Yeah, she's seems like she's getting better. Yeah, I, I think Biden. I think Biden's uh, Biden's place in the polls is because of his recogni recognizability. That if you say Biden to most people in this country, they know who you're talking about. If you say Elizabeth Warren, not mm -hmm. as many. Who's she? Who's she? Yeah. Which one of those women is? So that? I mean, Elizabeth Warren has a uh, recognition deficit, but as time goes on and she becomes more popular and her, mm -hmm. you know. I just think what she does in most cases, I'm surprised that she couldn't give Colbert a straight answer, is I've just found that she does have a tendency to explain this stuff very well. You know? Uh, so I, I don't understand why she would dodge that question. 
So, but uh, anyway. Uh, American Patriot listen. says she's the Indian running for president. Fuck you, American Patriot. You know what I'm going to do? I'm yeah. going to put him on timeout here. How do I do that? <laughs> Let me see here. Uh, put user in timeout. Okay, American Patriot, you're in timeout. So all these other people can have something to say. Oh, wow. Did you see that? Are you looking at it? Boom, boom, boom. That's G's yeah. out. <laughs> View deleted message, it says here. But, but, but on yours, he just disappears, right? No, I deleted everything he said. Oh, it deleted yeah, everything you said. Message okay. deleted, message deleted, all of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I think it's like about, it's uh, American Patriot was timed out by Alex Bennett for 300 seconds. How many seconds, how many minutes is that? Uh, five minutes. Five, five minutes. minutes. Five minutes, okay. That you've worked. got to time out, American Patriot, five minutes, okay. But you've been, the, you and American Patriot are the only two that have really been talking here anyway on the on the chat, so. Now Alex and his YouTube communism. Huh? <laughs> what? Alex and his YouTube communism. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, uh, uh, anyway, um, so um, uh, how do you think our president's handling the Iran thing? Uh, I, th I think he's being pretty measured. You know? Yeah. You know, he's, he's being he's being hmm? Saudi Arabia's bitch. Well, he's being Saudi Arabia's bitch, but he's also not saying we're going to war. You know, he's he's waiting for somebody else to do it to so he can say. Salman, hmm? whatever his name is. He's, he's waiting for Salman. somebody else to do it so he can say he didn't do it. <laughs> oh, I see. OK. Um, and then he's going down and signing the wall. Boy, I was watching the world's greatest anti-war movie the other day. And I'm going to say, what is that? Actually, it turns out that I was watching what I consider to be, after I watched it, the best comedy ever made. Without question. What is that, Alex? Well, let me tell you. It's funny you should ask. Uh, I was watching, I was on Turner Classic Movies, and I was watching Duck Soup with the Marx Brothers. Brilliant. Just brilliant, and a brilliant political statement as well. You know, I just love that picture. Um, I found the comedy, some of the most perfect comedy ever created in a film. So I made my point. That's all I had to say. All right. <laughs> and and uh, American Patriot, you can't say anything back, okay? <laughs> For another, what, three minutes or something? I love that power. I, I like that power. Maybe I'll do that to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably driving American Patriot crazy. When he comes back, he's probably going to call me a communist, in which case I'd give him another five minutes out. So. There you go. <laughs> Boom. I learned that a couple of weeks ago that I could do this and do that, and it's such a feeling of power. You want to <laughs> fuck with me? Okay, I'll fuck with you. <laughs> Delete it. Huh? Yeah, I say, oh, I can view the deleted message. You can't do that, right? It just makes him disappear. No, it just has his name in every message. It says message deleted, <laughs> which is which is even better, really. Does it say deleted by Alex Bennett, or does it just say deleted? No, it just says deleted. Oh. Well, Morfave says bye bye, SG, you fascist. Who's SG? <laughs> Candace D says, American Patriot really SG? What? Is American Patriot really SG? Oh, is SG the guy who calls us every now and then? Yeah. I think so, yeah. 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 He's a guy down there near, near uh, is he down there by Scott? Yeah, Scott's friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, well, SG's okay. He just gets a little obnoxious. That's all. He interrupts the program. Now you're frozen, Kevin. I'm here. I know Maybe you're I there. You're frozen. Know. Is he frozen with the rest of you? Oh, yeah. I can see I'm frozen on YouTube, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Must be a YouTube thing. It's the great gods yeah. of YouTube. Turn off your camera and turn it back on again. Let's see what that does. Okay. Oh. Hang on a second here. Turn off I see you moving your face. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, it's I'm, weird because it was uh, 
doing that to Tony, but yeah, but now yeah, I'm not off. To, now I'm yeah. back. Oh. I should be turning back on now. Uh, yeah, now you're now you're okay. Okay, uh, maybe it's just the YouTube thing. Or maybe you were just holding still. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not not that long. <laughs> so um, we were talking earlier with Bobby about this. Oh, by the way, I, it turns out this guy uh, that they banned from Saturday Night Live, they threw off Saturday Night Live. That he, it happened only a couple of months ago. I thought it happened several years ago. Yeah, me too. It, it only happened a couple of months ago. Um, and uh, it's quite a, you know, I, I think, I, I just, I'm, I'm bothered by the fact that because I, I knew, knew comics and I know comedy and I know what comics' minds are like, and they will do anything to make people laugh. And they don't sit around and think about the consequences. They don't think about whether it's in good taste or bad taste. Uh, and some comedians will tell you if it's in bad taste, I'm happy it was somebody thought it was in bad taste. Yeah, um, but they're all out there scrambling for the buck. You know, they're out there scrambling to get gigs. They're scrambling out there to get recognized in the business, and they don't do this in a vacuum. And so they will sometimes take chances on material and not think about what the results would be later on. And this guy, I think, was probably th thought he was making some jokes, and he, he doesn't seem like he's a very funny comic. So I don't know why Lauren Michaels even hired him. But apparently they saw something in him. But, I mean, you, you hire people to do comedy, you have to expect they're going to have to have, they're going to have some bad stuff in their background. Okay? And it's like Bobby Slayton, like I was talking to Bobby. If, if they were to, if you want to go back and find out if Bobby said anything politically incorrect, well, Kevin, you know what Bobby's act, don't you? Oh, yeah. Do you think we can go back and find stuff he did? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what did and the it guy was say? funny. I, huh? And it was funny. Well, I mean, what did the guy say? All I read was the headline. I don't usually care about that. It was about something about the Chinese. I don't know. It didn't look like it was very funny. It didn't look like the guy's a very funny comic. I mean, did but, he use like a slur, like a, an Asian slur or something? I mean, well, I, I, he, he might have, but, you know... The thing that gets me is the thing that they're digging this shit up from how long ago? Well, this was only a short time ago. This was not like, I thought it was like 10 years ago, and it wasn't. It was just recently. Some okay. podcast he does with a friend, and I don't know. I think he okay. may have I, used, yeah, I didn't he may have used the, can we say, C word? You oh, know, a chink in the armor. Which, yeah, which, which Tony uses constantly to describe a form I mean, of I mean, a form I, of cuisine. Yeah. Uh, call me, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't you call up? Uh, didn't you call up uh, Shecky one night and say, "Let's go get some chinks"? Didn't you say that? I do that all the time. He's got a great Chinese. Voice. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize he left. I didn't even realize what I said. But I wouldn't mean anything bad. By it. He's got a nice Chinese place there. I said, "Let's get some chinks." He does have a good place there. That's really good. Now, the, the question like, is, the but, question is, yes, it's a pejorative term, okay? But, but, and, yeah. and, I, and I throw in this big but, but you didn't say it to be mean. No, not at you all. You said it as a descriptive phrase, and so should we hold yeah. that against you? If I were Chinese, would I hold <laughs> that against you? No, if you called me a guinea, I wouldn't hold it against you. I would actually laugh. I actually have a good sense of humor. I mean, like, I wouldn't, I would never mean. Well, then again, mean then spirit. again, then again, nobody calls uh, kosher food uh, kikes. That's true. Right? You know, but the reason they don't call it kikes is because the only people that call uh, Chinese food chinks are kikes. So anyway, uh... <laughs> but, but but why is it? I don't know. Yeah. I, hmm? I just don't know why people. If it's in the form of comedy, I, I don't really, I don't know why it matters. I mean, I don't even really watch comedy or anything, but I mean, I've flipped through and I've seen bits and pieces. And I, I've never seen a black comic, for example, at least one that wasn't, you know, on something that was uh, edited. I mean, but like, I've never seen a black comic on like HBO programs or whatever who didn't use, you know, the word nigger like 50 times in their stand up. Yeah. I mean, why is that okay? But well, it's, uh, plus, but if a white comic did it, he'd have to be fired. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm just asking. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's well, fucking I mean, comedy. I, 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 you're looking. The first thing you're looking at is a 
it says comedy on the show or the venue you're going into. You got to expect that. And, and a black guy calling me a cracker, I couldn't care less. Right. I mean, I, I, you know I what? Mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. I've seen comedy. Black... Right, that's like I've seen comedy. black comics before in like HBO specials and whatever, making fun of white people, and the audience was overwhelmingly black, and they were laughing, and I'm white, and I was fucking laughing because it's some of that shit's right I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you though, I have watched. If a white comic I, did that, that would be, yeah, you know, I've watched, I've career. watched Chris Rock do his act in which he goes, and white people do this, and white people do that, <laughs> and white people do this, and white people do that, and I was offended. And I was offended precisely because if I had done the same material about black people, they That's wouldn't. What I'm saying. They wouldn't let me on Saturday Night Live, okay? <laughs> but they let him go on Saturday Night Live doing this material, you know. And and I think that, you know, if if I can't go around telling jokes about black people, okay, then uh, I don't know that. I like the idea that Chris Rock goes around doing... Well, let's go to the only but, black but, person that's ever called this program, oh, practically. Lord. Charlie. You see, that's the problem. That's the problem, Alex. I think it's got to go both ways. And yes. I, I would sit there and I would laugh at it, too. How do you feel, You know, Charlie? because you know what? Yeah. Uh, us white people, the same... Got the same problems everybody else does. Yeah, Charlie. And I laugh at that shit too. Charlie. Because we are, you know, the same, the same way. It doesn't matter. Charlie, how do you feel about it? Uh, as much as I like Richard Pryor, I don't like him using the word nigger. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, but he's funny as all shit. <laughs> yeah, but how, how about Chris Rock? Do you think that some of his material is like anti-Caucasian? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And yet we're supposed to sit there and take it, right? I think it has something to do with it's all right to to uh, to whatever criticize upward, but mm. you can't criticize downward. Maybe. So, like, if slavery hadn't happened, we'd be even. But yeah. because the shit did, <laughs> we got a couple hundred more years of this shit, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. I think that's the rationale. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, it looked like uh, who was it that I banned? Yeah, he's still the, he's yes, back. Five oh, minutes. He, his 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 uh, detention is over. Yeah, but but I don't see he didn't. Uh, oh, American Patriot, right? He's, yeah, back. he's back. He's back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He said he was a listener for fifty years, going back to WPLJ. Really? Is, it, is that fifty years? I guess it is fifty years. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, 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 Tony. You know, let me ask you a question. This is funny that you said that. Like. Is it almost dangerous now if you're a white comedian, like, to get on stage? I don't imagine if you were talking to one and be like, you know what? If I say this, they're going to kill me. If I say this, they're going to kill you with that. So what am I going to use? Well, you got to cut this whole thing. It's almost like they want to strip you naked, really. You know who it's gets like away with a lot of stuff, though? And, and I think it's because of there's a certain charm he exudes. And so, therefore, he gets away with it, although lately he's gotten some complaints. Dave Chappelle... Oh, I love Dave Chappelle. Uh, Dave Chappelle seems to get away with some very dangerous material. He did a what bit about Bill Cosby. Oh, he did? And, he does, yeah. And he said, you know, let's face it, Bill Cosby uh, gave to co uh, college uh, uh, educational funds, millions of dollars to, kid, uh, to, to educational funds for black students and blah, blah, blah. And he was the first black to star of a, of a network comedy show and blah, 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 blah. And he lists all these accomplishments of Bill Cosby and all the things that he's done for the society in giving back, okay? And he said, so doesn't it even out a little bit that you got to take the good with the bad? <laughs> <laughs> you know, look at all we got from him. The, shouldn't we let him kind of get away with this? You know, uh, and, he did and put that, a lot of kids through colleges, right? And, and I'm not quoting his material correctly here, but it, oh, it's God. that kind of material that Chappelle does, and because he does it in a certain way that's kind of, I have to say, disarming and charming, uh, yeah, he gets away with it. But but you're right though, because if six months from now. Bobby Slayton went on stage and did the same exact bit about this Jeffrey Epstein guy, mm. his career would be over that night. When he walked off stage, that'd be the last time he was, right? I mean, 
if you, you know if six months from now he went on and did well, a well, well, thirty well, seconds of a twenty five minute show about Jeffrey Epstein in a joke that way he'd probably he'd be done. He, well, here's here's what happens with the Jeffrey Epstein thing. As you know, Bobby knew Jeffrey Epstein. I heard that interview. I couldn't believe that. In fact, that was he funny. he he used to stay at Epstein's when he was in New York City. He stayed at an apartment house he had, and he had apartments in this apartment house, and he let friends stay there. Uh, and he was a fan of Bobby's, and so he said, anytime you're in New York, you know, please uh, come uh, come stay. Uh, the first thing Bobby said to me when Epstein was arrested, well, there goes my apartment. Uh, and I didn't know that that was the guy. He always talked about knowing this guy who knew people, and he was introducing him to various people. He introduced him to Woody. Uh, and uh, I, I never put the two together until finally he writes me and says, I just lost my place in New York City, you know. And oh I said, my God, you knew Epstein? Said, yeah, it was Epstein. Uh, he said he did. I was talking to him today when we weren't doing the interview, and he said, I didn't know anything about him that way. You know, you would yeah. have never known it in the way that I knew him, okay? But the point is that what happens is you really don't want to let people know you knew Epstein because if you do, yeah. they go, well, he was probably supplying you with young girls. You know, that's the immediate thought that people have. And that Bobby said, you know, he said, I didn't know any of this was going on. I knew the guy was a little strange. He didn't leave the house much, you know, wow, things absolutely. like that. He said, but outside of that, he, I, you know, when I heard about this, it was the first thing, time I ever realized he was into this kind of shit, you know. So yeah. you don't want to admit you know Epstein. And, I mean, obviously, he met Woody through Epstein, who knew him. See, you have to understand, Epstein was the kind of guy that would ingratiate himself to anybody famous. So it doesn't, it's wow. not impossible to believe that he knew Woody Allen or that he wanted to know Bobby Slayton or that he met Donald Trump and, and schmoozed him. You know, of course, that's what Epstein was all about. That was his life. You know, so anyway, that, that's the point. Um, and I, uh, 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 so uh, anybody that was even associated with him was afraid of admitting that, and they shouldn't be f afraid to admit it. The fact is, you admit it. You know, you, yeah, I knew Jeffrey Epstein, and uh, I, uh, you know, I, I fucked a little girl he knew. No, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's ridiculous, you know. And then they gave they gave here's the one I like uh, what's her name the uh, the actress uh, 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 Bill Macy's wife. Um, oh, what's her name? Oh, Huffman. 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 Felicity Huffman. Huffman. They gave Felicity Huffman. Are you ready for this? Boy, this is tough. Oh, I don't know how she's going to do it. Fourteen spot. days in jail, <laughs> and, and 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 not just any jail, a federal prison, which <laughs> is like a country fucking club, you know. You go there. What what time does the croquet start? You know, I mean, it's. Uh, she but she crying. Why did they give her fourteen days? I mean, <laughs> why don't you just say okay, you know, time served or whatever, you know? But fourteen days—that's punishment. Can that's, she get off on good behavior? That's a chance to get away from. <laughs> that's a chance to get away from your kids and husband for fourteen days. You know, yeah, it's, it's, six hours. it's going. It's going. She's going to club fed. You know, uh, vacation. It's a vacation, yeah. Now, here's what I found out was terrible. Uh, when she got there, I think she's already, you know, if I were her, I'd say, let's just go there now and get it over with, okay? <laughs> but they give her uh, toothpaste. Uh, they give her, I think, a sewing kit. Sewing kit? Uh, they give her a toothbrush, because you got to use it for the toothpaste. Uh, and <laughs> And then... One roll of toilet paper for two weeks. Do you know any woman who can only use one roll of toilet paper for two weeks? My mother weeks? goes through like two rolls a day, Alex. Yes, I exactly. Know. They use it like it's like, it's, you know, I mean, it's... <laughs> Yeah, like you yeah, cash it, pull it out. You know, I use it. I'll tell you how I use toilet paper. I'll take uh, three pieces because nobody ever uses one sheet of toilet paper. I'm sorry. I know they they have the things there, but does anybody use? Has anybody here ever used one sheet of toilet paper? No. 
Okay. Yeah. So if it says square, 500 can sheets, you spare a square. I, I, exactly. Can you spare a square? Anyway. You know what happened now? Huh? My, my mom is blind, so she can't see good. So one when she she must have put the toilet paper like in her PJs, she walked to her bedroom with a wall, and I saw it like it, it was still attached. So she was taking it from the bathroom. The whole roll was going into her bedroom. I said, Mom, your mind? I had to follow it and rip it off. <laughs> It's like, you're there. oh, I'm sorry, because she can't see sometimes. Yeah. I said, what the hell are you doing? Wow. Oh, my God. That's well, why I go through rolls over here. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, anyway. So I do, like, maybe three oh, three pieces, and I fold them over, all right? And then I, I you know what you do with toilet paper, wipe my ass, okay? <laughs> and then you, of course, do what everybody does. You look at it to see how much you manage to gather at that point. And then do I do another piece with it rolling over three pieces? No, I fold that one in half and then do some more. And then if I can fold it over another half, I do it and fold some more. So really, per ass wipe, I'm, I'm good for only three squares. Okay. She's going to run out. Do you know any woman who would do that? Well, she's lucky my mother's not in her cell with her because she'd be out of it with by 3 o'clock. <laughs> my ex would go through a roll all the day. You're I'm right. up and down the stairs like a jackrabbit. That's why I just you bring six me. bundles in the back. Wait, you go through, you go through a roll a day, Charlie? My ex did. Really? I can't make two weeks. I can go a week on one roll. Of I could probably go a week on a roll of toilet paper, maybe, but I couldn't go two weeks on a roll of toilet paper. You know, and and I I mean, and you would think that in a prison they would just say, look. You get as much toilet paper as you need. Just let it, we give you one roll at a time. Let us know when you need another roll. But what do you do if you run out of that roll after the first week? Do you have She's to sit there and do what a dog does? Rub your butt against the ground or something? Why? <laughs> she could be shitting on the floor. She's still got a white but though. Yeah. She can do? But, but two weeks, she gets one roll. It's a and I bet it's I bet it's that one ply shit, that really bad stuff, you know. Yeah, you know. Well, that's easy to flush on the one ply. I get the, I get that sometimes because I don't want them to clog the toilet. But because the two ply, sometimes it could get stuck. The way she uses it, I says you gotta flush a few times. Yeah, well, my here I have to sometimes uh, if I if I if I dump too much in the toilet, not paper, yeah. but just. Normal material. Sometimes it won't all flush. Yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah. You know, and then it gets stuck down there. And then you got to go get the plunger. Oh yeah, I've been there with her. Yeah. And you got to do the plunger, yeah. and finally it gets mm. gets down there right. somehow. The terrible. Yeah, you know, some days I'm just good for having really basically shitting caulking, you know, and uh, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. What are we talking about, folks? <laughs> well, we have more. Well, the number Wait a minute. More num more num people listening than we've had all night. <laughs> so speaking of that? shit, how's Trump doing? What? How's oh, Trump well. speaking of shit? Alex, if 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 she wins Warren, Phil's gonna probably go crazy. Well, I I think, you know, I keep thinking, do, does she have a chance against Trump? I would like to see her be a VP, maybe. And I'm beginning to, she I'm beginning to think one of my turds in the toilet <laughs> has a better chance than Trump. <laughs> Well, that's true. You know, I mean, but then again, we wrote him off last time. I know. He, he scares me. I think he can win. But, no, he thinks he can get away with anything, and I think the Democrats are afraid of that fact, and I don't think he can. What do you think, Josh? I think that he thinks that he can, yes, and I think the Democrats are afraid of that. Uh, I think they're very afraid of that. And a part, part of it is a lot of it is right. I mean, the poll numbers keep not looking good, good for him but i still worry about it because i just don't i just don't see it in, in terms of at least where i live mm -hmm. i don't see anybody backing away from him if anything the more trouble that he gets into the more emboldened they are for him because they think it's all just you know made up shit i mean they they really believe that there's a conspiracy against him or whatever so you know, I mean, let me tell you where I live. I mean, you can drive down the streets and it's very common to pass people flying three by five Trump 2020 flags where they used to fly the American flag. I mean, that's, 
you know, it, it's very common in the area that I live. People love him. Yeah, but I, you know, I think that, I think, uh, it, it's a matter of, you know, the electoral college, but I think yeah. that these candidates, any one of the Democratic candidates, can take some of the area that he did have in the last election, which I think he's going to yeah. lose for financial purposes. I think there were two realities. Him saying that the economy is better than it ever has been, which it isn't, uh, but it's, it's certainly doing better than it was, okay, because Obama put it on a good track to getting better. <laughs> You know, Gazunte uh, uh, put it on a good track to get, you know, move forward. Uh, but on the other hand, the question is do some people actually feel that? You know, it, there's a reality between what he says is and what people yeah. feel it is. And I don't think most people I, feel that they're better off now financially than they were when he took over. Yeah, I think it just depends where you live, maybe. I mean, because I'm sure there are some neighborhoods, obviously there are, I mean, in the country where, you know, you could drive through and it's not like mine at all. It's, you know, in fact, probably the exact opposite. So I just happen to live in a pretty rural area, you know, and I mean, that's just kind of the way that it is here. But you're aware again. I mean, it doesn't look good for him in terms of some of the states that he'll need to win overall. The polls aren't looking good, but it's just it's still just so early is my thing, you know. I mean, that's just like three or two or three months ago, maybe, maybe eight weeks ago, it, you know, it was, oh, Kamala Harris is the superstar, you know, superstar. She is just going to, she's going to rock Joe Biden's world. That, that motherfucker, he's done. This Kamala Harris is going to fuck Actually, Kamala, Har Kamala I mean, Harris, Kamala I Harris. Mean, here, here, where'd he, that go? Well, let, you know, if we were to make a list of people who should get out of the race, I think Kamala Harris should be one of the first ones. Because I think her star is sinking faster and faster and faster. It's not that she's done anything wrong. It's just that she hasn't done anything spectacular lately. Whereas Elizabeth Warren, the one thing Elizabeth Warren has done is she's been consistent in her tenacity. You know? And she hasn't given up and she's, you know, she's making her points. And, you know, she gained me as a fan. And I was kind of on the fence about her, as Charlie probably knows, you know. Uh, but I, as time went on, I went, you know what I'm seeing, I like. I, I just don't know if she can win. That's the only thing that bothers me, you know. And I don't think Biden can win. I think Biden's too doddering now to win. I, I think he, he has some dangerous mental problems when he is saying to an American public and trying to relate to the bottom line American public, and, you know, you should uh, turn on your phonograph or whatever the thing was he said. Yeah. The phonograph? <laughs> so the record, record player. Yeah. And then he almost said phonograph, and he, he stopped himself. Oh, record player? How many here have a record player? Would you raise your hand? I don't you actually have a record player, Charlie? Yeah, I still have my garage turntable that I bought in, in 1969. Mm -hmm. And does it still play? Yes, yes it does. And do you still listen to stuff with it? Oh yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I can't now. It's all packed up and down in the truck. But... <laughs> do you? Oh, you know what? I still got mine too. Now that I think about it. <laughs> do you? Uh, do you? Uh, do you uh, hook it up to a? Uh, giant battery and stick earphones on it and use it as an iPad or something like that or an iPod. Yeah, the Pioneer I SX record, uh, All I know is when you're when CDs. you're using a term like record player, you know, you're you're really dating yourself. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, and and I don't think that's what any politician can afford to do right now. You have to seem to be modern in your approach to things. I mean, I guess next he's going to let us go get a beer out of the uh, out of the, the ice box. box, right? As a matter of fact, I think <laughs> didn't somebody do a, a, a quick uh, syn a, a synopsis, I guess, of a bunch of stuff that he did like that, a bunch of things that he said, not like last week or something. I thought somebody <laughs> put together a string of a bunch of those, you know, record player ice box and you know. <laughs> Went went down to the ash can and 
threw something out. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I, uh, up until a few years ago, I mean, I still probably use it occasionally. I've used the term ice box because that was the term my parents used. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, actually, in my last apartment in San Francisco, I actually had what was an ice box. It wasn't being used as an ice box anymore. I used it as a liquor cabinet, but yeah. it was still in the wall there, and it still had yeah, a place yeah. to put the ice. And uh, you know, well, uh, some of those places in the city have dumb waiters too, right? <clears throat> yeah, some. Uh, yeah, we have. My, there's a fuse box I have here that probably at one point <laughs> was what they put it, the fuse box in used to be a dumb waiter. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I guess that's how they got their milk. Or something, you know, yeah. <laughs> using the dumb waiter. Uh, I, I remember where my grandma, mm -hmm. grandma lived in New York, mm -hmm. and the ice guy used to come to deliver every day. Yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, he uh, he had those tongs with the ice. Yeah, yeah. right. Wow, that must have been. Maybe the milkman union will support Joe Biden. Milk, milk man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I remember when milk was delivered onto the front porch. Do you remember yeah. you used to have that little... Glass bottles and the little you, round pogs. Yeah, but do you remember you had that little fan thing? And if you, you it had the different kinds of things you wanted, like milk, chocolate, milk, sour oh, cream, yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you would take those parts of the fan and bring them out and put the other... And then put them in the, yeah. uh, in the uh, milk uh, <laughs> bottle. And then he would order. then... Yeah, that was your order. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I'll tell you what I had oh, delivered God. to me in San Francisco until I finally stopped because I was getting too much of it. I, I subscribed to a service that delivered seltzer oh, in seltzer bottles. They had gone out and found old seltzer bottles and started refilling them, and I would get like six at a time, only I couldn't drink them fast enough, and they kept delivering them every week. <laughs> uh, people in San Francisco called the Seltzer Sisters, uh, and uh, uh, but I that was good, good seltzer. You know, I could make myself some egg creams. <laughs> now, does anybody know what I'm? Well, of course, Charlie knows what I. If, if, if yeah, Jeff I'll knows what I'm talking yeah. about, and Party and animal, and, and, and uh, Tony knows what I'm talking about when oh, I yeah. say egg cream. Yeah, you should get seltzer. Yep, Do you know what I'm talking about, Kevin? When I say. Seltzer. Egg cream? Oh, yeah. yeah. How about Josh? You know what I'm talking about when I say egg cream? Uh, yeah, I know what it is. It's a, a drink with three ingredients. One of them is seltzer, right? I don't remember Sel the Seltzer, chocolate, the milk. Yeah. And chocolate and milk. Right. Uh -huh. And, and uh, uh, what it was, the reason it got the name egg cream, there's no egg in it. But kids out in the Brooklyn where it was invented used to say, it used to be called an au creme. And the kids, bastardizing the word, said, let's go get an egg cream. So that's how it became egg cream. A little history for all you people out there who want to know New York history and so on. So. Mm. Well, let me, let me throw on the theme here. Uh, let me throw a theme on the fire, and we'll kind of bring this thing to a close. It's been very nice tonight. It's been very invigorating, as it were. Uh, so, so maybe I do need to take one night more off a week. I don't know. Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, 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 Kevin, as always, uh, fuck ALS. Uh, Josh, always good talking to you. Tony, nice having you here. Let's go out and get some chinks. And, uh, and, and of course, uh, 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 Charlie, you too. When are you leaving for, uh, for Texas? Huh? Wait a minute. Good morning. When? When? Monday morning. Monday morning. Two-day drive. Okay. And uh, a two-day drive? Okay. Anyway. Hey, everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye? I turned the audio down. That's why you couldn't hear them there for a second. Give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye uh, as well to you. Okay, there they go. There's our, uh, there's our citizen panel. I'll hang up on them so the Skype lines can be ready and usable for the next program coming up which happens to be the, uh, uh, the intersection, Jack Bishop. Okay, I just remembered. Uh, Jack Bishop will be doing the intersection. That's next over most of the same station. I'll be back again tomorrow night after uh, Damian Chaplin does his program at 9.30 called The Exchange. 
I'll see you at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. Bye.